Okay, so my name is Order the Rocks, uh, and here is a partial set of the Artsy uh, mobile team. Hello. Um, and we're gonna go through the latest, the code base of the latest uh, iOS app that we've released. That is the TVOS app rather than the iOS one. So that's called Emergence. Um, what happened was I tended built most of this all on, on my own, and so like I know this entire code base, but the rest of the team doesn't. And ideally, what we're going to do is try and go through as much as possible, discuss some of the like design patterns, figure out like why we made some choices, and also try and like make sure everybody understands what's going on in the code base. Um, okay, so I'm just going to get started straight away, um, and we could just start on the app delegate. I know it's crazy, right? Um, the only interesting thing in the app delegate really is like this notification. Um, which is a like this is a constant that comes from the TV TV services that says that um, if the app is on the top row, so like the equivalent of the dock for the TV, um, then it gets this extra content. So I can show this by running it. So while it's doing that, um, you also get to see the first time user experience where it shows images. Every other time, then it will only show as blank white the entire time. Um, so if I go back, now that notification tells the OS that those bits of data here that you're seeing along the top, the featured shows, actually exist. And that it should like run this extension in the background. Um, so I think it's a good place to actually start at the extension. So the extension is two Swift files. There's a service provider. Um, Lots of comments uh, and a a single like networking uh, NSURL session kind of thing. Um, and what it does, it's really simple. It just runs a uh, an NSURL session, pulls in uh, some JSON, and basically just passes out an XAP token. So like one of the problems ish here is that I didn't want to have this big uh, like pod file that included pods in anything other than the application because uh, you know, it's just more complicated that way. Um, so what I ended up doing was I these keys and things like that uh, all come in from uh, from CocoaPods in the actual app, but then I'm referencing them as though they were like copied files into it. So it, it's a lot easier to explain once you see that the paths here uh, are actual, you know, pods slash pod slash pods, and then I just copied them in, and then they were there and available, but they're not actually in the actual source, and they're not in Cocoa Pods. So it's just a reference to the existing files and so on. Yes, they're a reference to the existing files that must exist in the app, but they're just like cop like dragged in basically and said like, do not copy, but reference the existing ones. So that means I got the advantage of like being able to access some of the networking stuff, because more importantly, like um, these these tasks need to be able to do uh, some networking with an authentication request, but like not a user authentication. So we can just generate those at runtime because that's how our API works, um, and then uh, from there we can just build something out, make some requests. So there's there's some odd code in here. Um, mainly around this. So the way that the API for the front row, what do they call it, front page? Top shelf, that's what they call it, top shelf, which is a, a bit of a euphemism in British. Um, so the top shelf's API is a protocol. So the extension runs a single uh, instance of a protocol method. Right, so it, it says you must conform to this, this one object must conform to these, this protocol, and this protocol is a TV top shelf provider, and it's pretty simple. Um, it is basically four things, or well, three things, and a, 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 it provides a function for you so that you can figure out which size you want it if you have a, a rect. Um, one of the interesting things here is that it's entirely synchronous. So how do you deal with a synchronous API? Well, in this this top shelves item, we actually use semaphores, um, which are a way of like saying, like this thread is now locked 
until the semaphore has finished. So you have to so like in fact this would have this could have been a great place for a defer block, but which I do use later. Um, but it, there was reasons why I couldn't use it at the start of the semaphore. But basically, it says the thread that's trying to access top shelf items is locked. So now we can get out the keys. We can do some authenticate authenticated networking. And if there's an error, close the semaphore. Entire thread unlocks and it returns nil. Um, otherwise, it continues, makes an API request. So we have this thing on Artsy that's called a, like a featured set, which is a concept where like you could have a collection of models and they just like get jammed together. Um, in our case, we want to get the featured shows, so we just use the hard coded URL, pull it out, convert it into shows. Uh, we, no, we don't even convert it into shows. We just use the dictionaries directly. And then um, we basically here just map it to a show dict to a, yeah from a show dictionary to a TV content item. So you give the top shelf a bunch of these content items, and that says like uh, you know the name, the URL, the display URL, and we don't have to download the images. So we just give them a URL, and it just works. Um, the stuff was pretty nice, uh, pretty simple. Just flew straight through it really. So the protocol that they provide is actually synchronous, even though the API is supposed to display newly fetched stuff? Correct, completely. My guess is that they expect you to be using something like uh, you know, the NSU's defaults or a way of communicating with your app or having a shared documents directory. So the app would download the stuff and then post the notification. All right, but the semaphore hack, to some extent, like obviates the need for that problem. and like. The other thing here is I was trying to avoid including all of these extra frameworks in this extension. Mm -hmm. And by like copying in some files and then using the semaphore, I could have a super simple uh, a super simple little TV top shelf protocol conforming object without having to do a bunch of like things that I didn't need to do. Cool. Um, OK, so that's the top shelf. Let's look at. The authentication control. So in fact, I'll show you the storyboard because um, that gives a good sense of like the flow of the application. All right. So it's yeah, uh, it's really dark in here. So like white, thin white lines is hard to see. Um, it really. Oh no, I think this is is that this might just be Xcode's fault because there should be something there. Like that is that is working, but that is not. Let's see if I can exit and come back in. Ah, this is GM. This should be working. Well, we'll come back to this one later anyway. Uh, and this one you can't even see. So we saw this earlier, right? This was the um, the thing you see straight away when you click in. It is. Uh, yeah, I would have to kill the app too. Uh, killing apps really interesting. So you double click this, <laughs> right? Yep, and you throw it up, and then we rerun it again. All right, let's maybe it will work for time lucky. Maybe every, there we go. So it's this screen. So you really are only seeing like that. Um, the authentication view controller is uh, is a slideshow, but it is a clever slideshow. So its job is to ensure that there is authentication for the application. So um, from that point on, the app can be be safe, knowing fully well from this point in that it is fully authenticated. Any networking requests it make will like pretty much succeed. Um, and they don't have to do the job of like making sure that there's a, 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 t a token to make the, the connection between our API and our app, which is what all uh, our all our requests have to have some kind of token. Um, so what it does is uh, it's it's kind of aggressive. It's a slideshow that every at the end of it, uh, every slide then asks itself, um, do I have network? Do I have full authentication? And then, as well as that, um, it tries to pre-cache uh, the the featured bits along the top of the next view controller. So these things here, the featured shows that you see there, it wants to make sure that it's got as much of that data as possible before passing it on. Um, again, this is so that like 
I'm more willing at this point to show the artsy logo a little bit longer than actively having someone get to this page and just seeing like a big white gap with the words like featured shows and then New York underneath it. So the authentication view controller's job is to make sure that there is both a cached set of featured shows and a cached set of uh, an authentication. So the actual code here is just like super simple as well. It's like a here's a here's a loop. Have you finished the loop? And have you authenticated? And have you uh, got some featured shows that you can then pass in through Storyboard's layer? Um, so nothing too crazy. Uh, slideshows all get put inside a single extension to make me like try and like like slideshow delegate methods, I guess, get put inside that. Um, but I never like formalize the delegate pattern between the two. Um, look at this perform selector with a, with a nice string and Swift. Mm, awesome. <laughs> um, okay, and so. At this point, then, we know that we can open the show overview view controller that will have guaranteed to have a, um, it's guaranteed to have authentication by that point. If it doesn't, it will just show an error and just stay on the authentication view controller uh, screen, like just the Artsy logo, and it'll just be like, we're having trouble connecting to Artsy. Are you offline? Um, kind of message. Um, and then it passes it straight on to the show and overview controller. Um, let's try this again. So I'm going to try and explain it even with what we've got here. So this is a this is the right the show. Uh, I called it the host view controller at some point, but it's really the show's overview view controller. So that's what we're seeing here, and this is a collection view of collection views. So at the top here, we've got, <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. But like, this isn't even my idea. Like, I tried a few other things first, and eventually, like, just started going through Apple's sample code offline, and it was just, this is how they did these kind of things. Exactly. It, it makes total sense. It made, it, it, switching to that meant that I had to do none of the, like, the touch input stuff myself. And it just elegantly kind of handled itself nicely. Um, so, this just handles like up and down swiping pretty pretty elegantly. Um, you yeah, don't have to do much to handle the bits going on, uh, but uh, it also. But the real interesting things here are not like this, like this example of how you can move it up and down. But like the real strange things come from when you're trying to start thinking about how can you pre-cache as much of this data as possible, because ideally when you go like sideways on this. Uh, there should never really be a loading, and there probably will not. If you saw up here, um, it now says 89 current shows, whereas previously it didn't. So uh, this is New York, so none of the other ones will. They'll all have these these current shows things straight away. Um, we don't show shows that don't have installation shots. Or to undouble negate, we only show shows that have installation shots. So when we ask the API, we don't know. Uh, at that point, we have to like map it to only things that include. Well, we filter the only things that include installation shots. So we don't know how many shows there are entirely. So we can't ask the API for that because there's an API call for it. So we do all that processing post downloading ourselves. Once we know we've got all of them, then we can then say this is how many shows are in this set. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we do there, what we do here is kind of cool. Um, I'll show the code. Show overview. Okay, um, bunch of vars and lets. Uh, part of this is like we we use a class from SD Web Image that allows you to just like pre-cache a bunch of images. Um, these 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 are pretty simple APIs that just say like uh, you just took it a collection of URLs in this prefetch URLs. And you can optionally get call, callbacks and things like that, but like generally, it's just not that we don't we don't need that. Um, uh, usual pattern that there's like like a, kind of one of the the further view controllers, like the the, the rootish view controllers, is one that contains as much state as possible. Um, like so, in this case, the app view controller, which is the like initial view controller that does nothing. 
like it just hosts the navigation view controller. Um, that hosts a context object, um, which offers like the Moya API and uh, keys, I think, if needed. I'm not sure if it does it's for app context. Oh, it provides an, uh, an app-wise offline thing, similar to what you did in uh, Eidolon, so that then you cannot start using stubs. Provides uh, the, the, the authentication library and provides a networking from Moya. Um, from there, like this overview shows overview thing has like this this paradigm of uh, featured of like show emitters. So for each row in the initial collection view, uh, there is a, a, a show emitter protocol um, whereby we say that uh, here we go. We say it is something that has a title. It has a number of shows. It can get an individual show. It can eventually get show. It can like get new shows and it can and every time it updates it does a callback um, so straight away I just made a, a stubbed version of that so that then I could start working things offline um, which is just a simple stub emitter that just generates a few stub shows and passes that back um, but like the simplest one of these is the featured show emitter, which is like, you know, it's got a title that it will be featured shows and it will make a single API request, which comes in from Maya. So it does a Maya request the featured shows, converts that into a show. And then when it's finished, we actually just set self.shows to be shows. And on setting that, it will then call the update block that is like the thing that the shows overview will listen to. And then we'll start doing the well, maybe not the show's overview, but like the cell for the, sh the, 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 the horizontal items within the show's overview. So these ones, the things that are going across, like the Paris ones. So this cell gets the update notification. Um, then what it does is uh, we have a... <laughs> This is a great weird hack, right? So there's a location host, right? Um, in order to make sure that we are consistently consistent with the website, <laughs> yep, we we submodule in the npm module that Artsy has. That's all about cities and their locations, and then we take out their JSON. And we convert that into Swift objects. Wow. So that's what this is doing. I mean, whenever I'm like complaining about Swift, it's because I'm doing stuff like this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and so what this means is like this provides a nice API for like getting a city's location, uh, like its coordinates and things like that. That then the rest of the API will work with, uh, in order to be like consistent with the entire website. Um, and they also just have like a set of, of like featured the, again, it's an, it's an adjacent thing, but in this case, I just figured like I could just hand code those, but I'm not going to do that for the rest of them. Um, and so we, we get the list of the featured, we pull out the real data and then we create location based show emitters with one of these locations that gets, this got generated from the JSON from the NPM module. Yep. Uh, okay, so feature uh, feature show is easy. Location based show is also kind of easy. Like none of these are, like trying to be too crazy. Uh, unlike the featured show, feature show is always going to be eight items because eight items looks good on the website. So you know there's never going to be a need to cycle through and get more. Um, so this has to do pagination, um, which is super simple, super dumb, and allows for like being repeatedly called. Uh, so it does, it does, you know, it's work on a background JSON scheduler as well, so that it does all the networking off on a different, like, observable. Um, for everyone else, this is like Rx Swift stuff. So it's it, like Moya is generating an Rx Swift kind of reactive observable chain. Um, and like, at one point we switch from working on the main uh, the main thread to working on the background thread, and that's what we're doing here with this observe on JSON scheduler, where it then does all of the mapping of JSON to real objects, 
And then after that, we then send it back onto the main thread. And then at that point, we actually start subscribing and doing our like actual work. Um, like the people that write Rx Swift will be shaking their heads here, and Ash is shaking his head here, and he's, he's taking he's taking notes. Uh, but it's like, yeah, I'm using all this like functional stuff. But the moment that I get back into this, I'm just like, yep, yeah, self dot done, self dot page, self dot networking is false. Um, and this is that point where I said earlier that we have to filter that it has installation shots and that it has artworks because I managed to find a bunch of them that don't have artworks, and that's a problem because I didn't take that into account in the UI. Um, so we have these. We also have these two things here for caching, uh, which is like uh, being able to easily pull out the best thumbnails for things straight away, um, because so that we can say like we aggressively cache on two 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 fronts. So looking at this right now, uh, if I was here, so we're gonna cache. Wait, let's say I've just scrolled onto featured shows. The first thing it will do, it will make sure it's grabbed the first three images because that's just natural because they're already there because the cells are on. It will also grab the next three uh, images in, the, in New York. So it will say, like, please take those. Um, every time I scroll sideways or up and down, it will then start um, asking for further, further, further images. So it will ask for the next five in the in the horizontal direction, and the next three in the direction below. So if you are going through New York, which in this case has 89, then slowly and slowly what you're going to be doing is having more and more art, like images pre-cached that you would scroll that way into, as well as having the one that you're going to go down into fully pre-cached by the time you've got to it. Um, so generally, when you're using this on, on the TV, like you really don't see that many loading screens on this screen specifically. Um, and that stuff is just, uh, it's down in whoo, collection view cells. Oh, that's, that, that's something we have to go over too. Uh, this all in this focus stuff, um, which says like, check to see if you're moving sideways so they both have the same collection view parent. If they don't, don't bother doing anything. Um, if it is, I'm clicking through. Oh, right. It makes sure that it uh, it doesn't do anything if you have clicked on the about at the top, um, and then starts to look at whether what type of um, views exist within the structure because you are getting an update focus like deep down into the the collection view cell. So you're seeing that you're seeing the cell that is being selected. So in this case. Uh, ooh, you could use this if this works. So the one selected is um, like pretty deep in the view hierarchy because it is the collection that is the collection view cell that is actually selected. So in this case, uh, can I make that bigger? All right. So in this case, the selected cell is this, but I want to go from that cell all the way back up to the source of that cell. So it has to go through both the current collection view that it's in out into the outer collection that moves up and down, so from the horizontal one to the vertical one, and then from the vertical one to be able to figure out what index the like the things to start caching from from. Um, not terrible, but like when you write in code that says super view, super view, super view as something, then you're going to be glad that this concept of guard exists um, because it like makes it really easy to just like have it failable. Because um, like all of this is superfluous, it, like you know, it's just extra niceties on the top. So it's not like if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Uh, if you started making changes to the view hierarchy, and like it expects it to be exactly four levels up. So it's still going to silently be your code. Yes. Well, not silently. Look, return print silently yeah. to be a blah 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 <laughs> blah. It's more that like, well, that's going to the developer. The developer's going to be like, you're going to see that like 50 times the moment you load the app if you uh, like just start scrolling around. It's not failing as like, I didn't want it to fail and like die. Because it's not critical. It's not like, you know, error. It's just not going to like pre cache some shows. Which means it's still, like, it's not going to pre cache the, the preview image for some shows. 
He's not. He's not convinced. Um, and I'm not going to convince you, obviously. So that's fine. No, you, like there just isn't an elegant-ish way to go from like one collection view to another collection view to then eventually get to it. Yes, but I also don't trust that Apple might not change something in the future. Cool. Oh, that's, got it. Um, okay. So other things. Oh, this is some more caching here because you know we got we got caching everywhere, um, which is like. So we request the images, but we also make the request for the the next page of a collection view that is also the one that you're currently on, as well as the one that is below every time you change focus within any collection view to make sure that all that stuff is there. Um, one of the hardest bugs that I had in the entire thing was that if you scroll up and down really fast and you start making changes to collection views, by the time the collection view has actually gone from you saying that you've started to make a change to you inserting the, the data, the collection view could have been reused at that point. <laughs> yes, because you can scroll really damn fast with a TV remote, but you can't scroll that fast with the little little thing on there. Um, so what we do is we actually start getting the velocity of the, the scroll speed, and we have different behavior inside the, okay, so we might have to jump into this in order to talk about it properly. Um, so the shows overview has that cell. The cell is the one that contains the horizontal stuff. So that's a show set, show set collection view cell. Oops. Um, so first of all, there's the Slack reference for me like typing it all out and talking it through. Um, as so this is whenever a, whenever a show emitter has said it has got new data. So when it's got new data, then it can update the title. The updating the title will update the side thing too. Um, so it starts to go through and it says like, right, how many shows are in there? If it's no shows, and just reload data. Reload data never crashes. That's, that's the safest option at any time. So it, whenever it's coming close to bailing, it just does reloading the data and instead of inserting data at the end. So even when you like when we're demoing this earlier, you were seeing like little bits of flashes of of bad Im of like reused cells. That's because like we're hitting reload data here because it doesn't feel like it can safely insert them at the end. I think I'm somewhere. I've done something wrong. Is the general gist, and I have never succeeded at doing this pattern correct ever in my life, including in Eigen, including in here. Which is why I tried to get Alloy to do it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and it's not much code. It's just like you know, you do a batch on the collection view, which says, and then you insert the few few things at the end, and then it's done. Um, nothing crazy. Like I managed to get it down to two lines because I spent so much time in this code that I could just keep code golfing it because I had nothing better to do. Um, and that's yeah. So it checks to see if it's scrolling. If it's it's only scrolling if it's a uh, like above a certain speed when it's going vertically, um, and if it if it isn't, then it will just like work. Yeah, it'll just do a reload, and you get a bit of a a bit of a crappier experience. But it's a trade off of like not crashing, which I'm fine with. Okay. Uh... What else is interesting there? I don't know if there's much else interesting in the show overview. Um... No. Oh yeah, kind of interesting um, because we're doing push uh, pushes onto a navigation stack. The authentication view controller is still in the navigation track because it just pushes it along. So the moment it like appears, we then go through all of the view controllers and just remove it from the navigation view controller. So it's gone from like like this to just being like this. We just pushed it across and just kicked it out. Um, yeah, there, there could have been another way of doing the authentication, but like a bunch of the things that you could do were animated into. So like, I want you need it to not animate into like the splash screen. Um, so I just removed it afterwards. I never saw a problem with it. 
Um, we also make sure that we close the caching when we leave. Nothing fancy there either. Uh, OK, so clicking on any of those takes you into a show view controller. Um, right. First of all, there was a really weird bug that I have still yet to figure out. That is, uh, if I go to like my storyboard. So within all of our apps, we have uh, things like this, which is just a our serif label. Uh, for people at home, um, what that does is, uh, oh, look, that isn't even an AR serif label. It's a UI label. Ugh, well, whatever. So <laughs> serif label effectively makes sure that it says that you've got a serif font regardless of what you do in, in a storyboard. Um, the same, we have the same for a sans serif label, which makes sure that you always have it uppercase because that's the branding. Um, and that also works fine. This probably is because this stuff predates uh, using custom fonts in Interface Builder, which was only added in like six point something. Um, so, right, yeah, the weird bug. For some reason that I have never been able to figure out, the intrinsic height on a serif font on the TV is double what it should be every time. So I have these half intrinsic, half intrinsic fonts things where the actual value is 2.73. Why? I have no idea. But uh, we instead now have the intrinsic content size like takes the original size, takes the size that they give that the UI label gives us, divides it by this number. And then rounds it up so that it will be always like the, the largest possible. Like, uh, so it'll always be an extra line at the bottom. So it's like if it was going to be, if it was going to be zero, then it would go to like thirty or something. So it will always fit at least a single line of y or two or three. Um, yeah, no idea what's going on there, but it, it it's just so I worked around it. I tried like every single font that we have in there and couldn't fix it. Um, OK, uh, this is just a UI stack view. Nice. Yeah, that's also really weird too. So there's no way to set individual margins on or anything like that like we do regularly. Um, you have to like create a view inside there and then create your views inside that one with a little bit of the side thing. Um, this white thing here acts a lot like a concept that we have again in Eigen that is a white space gobbler. So it is a, a thing that says like I am super weak in trying to stay the same size that you gave me an interface builder so I will take up all available space. Um, then I just chuck some stuff in, nice and simple. Uh, this is a super long like vertically uh, view controller because it just sits inside a scroll view so it can scroll itself. Um, but there's no like there's no way to do a direct scroll within TVOS like up and down in this case because it only jumps between focus things. So you have to have something focusable, which is probably what we'll get into like once we've talked a little bit about the the stuff going on in the artworks and the install shots and the about the show and the press release. <laughs> hey. So these uh, these things are really pretty simple. Um, the to make sure we, we know what we're looking at. Um, is this working? Did we stop? Normally everything's working fine. OK. All right. Uh, oh, I think, oh no, we've, we've, we loaded the, L, yeah. We loaded the view debugger, so it stopped everything. OK. Um, off view controller, right. So I'll bring a remote, click it through. Right. This is what we're looking at. Um, just an image view. When you scroll that way, uh, it will, oh, there we go. That was a good scroll. Um, it will slowly like allow you to move left and right. Um, the collection view looks to see if its index is not zero. And if so, then it will just move its left constraint to make it take the full screen. And it will also animate out the things here. Um, the focus thing works kind of nice because they provide you an animation context. So you can ensure that like the animations can stay perfectly in sync. 
However, when you're coming out from them, they are tiny, tiny, tiny. So moving like an entire distance like that in less than like 0.1-ish seconds is not feasible. Uh, like it's definitely feasible, but it's just not good. So we actually wait until you get to one, and then we add a delay, and then we move it back ourselves. So we we use the con we use the trans we use the correct way on the way in, but we don't use the correct one on the way out of like being in that full size screen thing. Um, Artworks, on the other hand, is like the most vanilla like collection view thing we've got going in here. Um, it uses our AR masonry layout thing we built for Eigen um, to make sure everything stays close together rather than being squares. That was really easy. I think I just set it in the. Uh, I think I just set it in here. Just like, yeah, you can just say like collection view thing. Be this one. Yeah. Um, so then I. Um, so. One big show view controller has all this like references to all the interface builder stuff. Deal with it. Um, it has these two generic classes for the delegates for the collection view and the data source for the collection view. Both of those have like really similar mechanics. Like they take a networking request and they present like something that has an, like an artsy image with a capital I. So like that's the actual image class, um, which is like something we can go into, but like uh, later, these collection view delegates are generic, so they're generic on an object, and they definitely conform to the delegate of collection view masonry layout. So what that says is that T has to be an NS object, so it could be anything, but like further on in here, we actually start to take out um, the actual object object reference from a generic T to an actual instance of an image. Uh, so like I think maybe I could have made like a protocol that says something is imageable, like where T is I don't know. I don't know enough about this stuff to maybe do it. But like it just meant that I could have like a single object that would do both the data source for both the artworks and the image views because all they really care about is like uh, what networking requests they get and what the show is. They both have a lot in common. Um, so they just pull out the image, uh, get the aspect ratio, do the usual kind of like gubbins for deciding like how big it should be, uh, how they should interact. Uh, if it checks to see if it's an artwork, if it's not, it's an image, then it passes itself back in, and then that is then used to like start putting everything together. Um, there's not much going on there. The the hardest the, the the sort of crazier code. Oh, one of the cool things that I learned from Apple Sample Code is that you should differentiate between the uh, so it's actually in the data source. So when you're generating a what is it collection view data source and it's like self or self alignment index path. They say in the self writing index path, you should be just generating the cell. You should never be doing any layout and custom, like no customizing the cell. Like all the customizing the cell should be done in the delegate. Will display cell. And the biggest advantage here is that you are guaranteed to know the size of your cell and that you're like, you're ready for it. Um, yeah, right. I had a bug around this. And then I consulted the source, the like the uh, the actual TVOS one, and saw that that was how they did it. And then I figured then that you know something that had worked on UI kit ish, like it now is like this is the correct pattern for doing that. Makes sense too, because then you know what's the best for display, so you know you're going to have to reset Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's. I think. I think I just never knew that like those two are meant to be two separate methods. And now I know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, other than that, there's nothing like unique or interesting in here. It's just like getting out the best thumbnails, setting them, um, 
if we can't like what's this one if the image is the show okay there is a weird thing here right pre-caching so everything is about pre-caching nowadays on this there's an interesting thing right you we do not want to show a we do not really want to be showing a gray, a gray box here when you load it up. We did on this one. Um, but ideally, what we do is if the image here that is being used is actually exists within the... Uh, so this works much better when you've got that. This should work. Um, if the install shot is the image for the show. So a show can choose to be either an artwork as its image or it could be an install shot. What we do inside our data source is the moment that we download all of our the install shots, we go and look to see if it if the images reference URL, if the show's reference URL is the exact same as the reference URL for one of the installation shots, we pluck it out and we put it at the front. So what that does is means that we can then use the pre-cached image from this page as the first image on the next page, meaning that we you'll get what we get here probably, which is like you see it and then it changes to be high resolution. Uh, well, in this case, that, right? So again, it's like ideally there should always be something that you see, um, and then you can like scroll sideways and whatever and like. But like again, we it's it's a nice optimization, but it's like some ugly ass code in here that's a little bit weird. Um, but it like it, it increases user experience completely in a way that is pretty much worth it. Um, uh, what else? <laughs> Subscribe to request. So like this um, collection view data source just takes it takes in a takes in a Moya like observable chain. Um, and then, like, totally does nothing rx -y with it, um, but uses that to say, like, I want to subscribe to this from this point on, and now it becomes networkable um, and, like, actively does the work, whereas previously it's just existed. Um, and then it downloads all the things, adds them to the end. Because this is not, you can't scroll through this really fast, then we can happily just batch it all, all uh, and insert them all at the end rather than having to do the reload data dance like we do on the one before. Um, and then we just uh, pre-cache, well, we, we ask it to like grab the collection views thumbnails that are not being shown right now. Um, and it's, it will do that both for the artworks and it will do that both for the install shots straight away. Now, uh, after shipping, I investigated SD web image and found out, I was ask you about this. right, <laughs> SD web image does not allow you to make two calls to the same thing. The second thing gets nilled. So your second request gets nilled out. So quite often, this one doesn't happen. You have a uh, there. Quite often, this second image doesn't load because the pre-cache and the official request from the collection view cell will, will display. The pre-cache is still going on. The second one asks for it, doesn't get an image because it gets a nil because SD web cache says like, there's an ongoing request right now, even though it is like on the prefetcher thing rather than on an actual networking request that does something, um, and it fails. The so the collection view fails and it never gets that image. It'll never get that image until you like leave the shows and come back in and it'll start a new request. Um, yeah. yeah, still generally worth it. Um, the artworks never have that problem because they're usually off screen straight away. And they just like all have usually downloaded by the time you've got down to it. Um, so that's generally the data source and the data, the other thing, delegate. Um, that's that moving cacheable images to the front. Uh, show view controller, right. So show view controller creates all those things that we talked about. Um, uh, does all these, the requests generates like a way of like being able to do stuff. Um, we allow, like, we have to customly set the padding on the left there to make sure that everything is, like, uh, set up correctly. Um, whereas on that one, it needs zero because, like, when it goes across, then 
it is like there should be no yeah it should be full bleed yeah um so this one this uh, this show has no about this show and no press release so you can't scroll down any further like, and you don't see the content like hidden along the bottom um so if i try the next one um right this one has some so earlier on i said that you only scrolls with focus this is like this is a fun one so right uh we have a show scroll chief object which i don't know if it ever really gets referred to in here um but this scroll chief is a thing that like takes total control over the the focus of uh the um the show view controller so when it goes into the show view controller every single like focus related delegate method goes straight through into the scroll chief. So it's entirely its job to decide like whether you should be going up, down, left or right. So it keeps track of like all of the collection views and then how big the page is. So we're just using uh, auto layout to say that, uh, <laughs> thanks, oh yeah, say that, uh, you know, these all connect to each other. So there's like constraints that say like, um, so this is a this is a UI stack view again, um, to define. Uh, no, okay. It defines like, roughly speaking, the heights. They allow them to go up and down as much as they want. Um, and then this scroll view, you know, has a set padding on the bottom and a set like padding margins between everything else. So, effectively, these could be any size. Not surprising. Um, and the scroll view, the scroll chief keeps track of how tall is the scroll view, therefore, like how many pages do we have to do? So it has a few magic numbers that it uses to start figuring out like how far can we scroll up and down. There is a known bug in here that allows you to scroll by like one extra normally. Yep, there it is. Uh, I think I turned on slow animations too, which is there we go, cool, turned off. Um, yeah, it's gotten off by one error. Uh, deal with it one day. Um, so it's not too hard, but all it does is just like have a list of um, views that are selectable, and then it just passes itself back to it, like the root view of the view controller. So the view controller dot view, and then from that point on, whenever it's whenever it goes to the view, then it gets taken over by this. And then this then manually moves it up and down by providing a scroll position um, in an animation block. And it took a while to actually come up with an, a nice number for how much to scroll. And it turns out like 0 0.9 seconds scrolling up and down feels natural, which I think is more of a testament to how big the screens are. Because like 0.3 feels natural on an iPhone, like maybe four feels natural on an iPad, but like on this baby, like nine, is like a good size for like feeling like the connection still works in the time in between. Um, okay, so that's the scroll chief. It just, you know, scrolls. It just works on pure UI gesture recognizers, so there's nothing fancy in there at all. Like it's just UI gesture recognizers on the, the root view. Um, and nothing nothing fancy there. The artwork view controller is uh, not initially an artwork view controller. It's an artwork set view controller, um, which is exactly yeah, the same paradigms we have everywhere else, um, where you, <laughs> who would have thought, where it is a UI page view controller subclass that is the data source of itself. So it's like, here's an array of artworks. Please chuck in um, the initial artwork view controller. It generates uh, artwork view controller from the storyboard and then sets its artwork and its index and then you can scroll left and right. The artwork view controller itself is super simple. Um, uh, it just, wow, there's a lot of comments there for this, something that I didn't, uh, drawing thumbnails possibly loaded. Ah, okay. Again, aggressive thumbnailing. Who would have thought? Um, we try and cache. We 
Yeah, so, okay, so maybe it's a bit of a weirdness. Right, you are, there we go, you're here on this artwork, right? So by this point, you are probably guaranteed to have pre-cached every single artwork image. And so when you go into here, ideally you should have that. So the first thing it does is it, it, it asks the last view controller, like what is the size of these artwork images? Because like these images that we're grabbing, we set the height and that is what is inside the URL. So we want to make sure that they're fully cached. So it will go and ask the ask for the best uh, thumbnail and it will pass in an existing image if it can find it. So takes the old thumbnail, chucks it in, puts a new one in on top of it, magic. Um, this goes backwards and everyone complains about it and we're not doing it. <laughs> right. So did you see how when I scroll that way, it, the content moves that way and the same that way? If you do it on this, it, it feels like when you move that way. Uh, so you're moving the selection rather than the content? Correct. That's the thing. Previously, here you were moving the selection. Inside here, you were moving the content. So like that disconnect happens to everyone. And I get bug reports about it all the time. And it's entirely UI page view controller's fault. Oh, we can't change it? Nope. Because that's the default. And that's the same on like the iTunes store and everything else. And like it's the way it does have photos. Yeah, it's a deal with it problem. So uh, there's obviously a bug here where when you come back in it doesn't set it back to the, the right one. <laughs> deal with it. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like that's every view controller. That's um, all of like the, the general fun foundations of like how all of this stuff works. Uh, the only thing we didn't really cover is something like how our ORM works. Uh, so like how do we go from a networking request with JSON to like a actual object? Um, we have these concepts of like somethingables that are ideally something that we can like eventually share out and say this is like anything can conform to a showable. And these are like the bare minimum. If you're doing Swift, then that means that like you can have something like the image URL from nameable, which says that it will have an image format string and an image version. If it has both of those, then that means it can get all of these functions for free. That like make it easy to say like find the first one with this the, the, the best available thumbnail type. Yeah, we have something very similar that one. Yeah. Um, uh, I experimented with a bit of a, a format change to normal, uh, where you have artsy pods, app pods, and target pods. It's all very pretty. In general, though, it's tiny. Like <laughs> comparatively, I'm sure there'll be people who've been like, "Whoa! I can't believe you've got like, I don't know, 12, 12 <laughs> 15." Um, but like, yeah, like this from this for me is like inconsequentially small. Um, because it, no? I just wonder if you have the same uh, app start time problem this way. I've not felt it. In fact, I've felt that the TV app time, launch time has been unbelievably fast. Like, even on ours, like, we show the authentication thing, and, like, people think that is our loading screen, right? Like, on, 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 on our, all our other apps, there's, like, on, on all iPhone apps, right? There's the first thing that you see, which is the, the, the default UI, iOS splash screen. We don't even have that on uh, the TV because it loads so fast. Um, so like, I, I, the internet's asked, like, is, like on, a, on the iPhone, there's a lot of constraints like battery, network, and CPU. Like, which, like, how, how much do those three constraints come into play on your TV? None of them. So just like, Network because we're going to be on Wi-Fi, so it's yep. more like just the network might be slow, not yeah. necessarily on. No, I yeah, I I don't take any of those into consideration. Like, there will be like 50, 60 initial networking requests of all that caching. The moment you make a single movement, so like at first it will just be there, but then it's like, and like I've never once felt like the real TV to like have a pause at all during the process. 
Um, so networking is fine. Like battery life obviously isn't even a concern. Um, and then speed has been brilliant. So yeah, I've been really happy with that. I've never once felt a single performance issue, except when I was doing JSON parsing, like tons of JSON parsing on the main thread, which, you know, you shouldn't do. So I dealt with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, ORM in is pretty easy. I made a few stub stuff so that I can work offline easily. I wrote a blog post about that. Um, this is what it looks like when we're converting from JSON to an object, which is like you define up front the things that you must have. If any of those don't work, then everything fails. Um, and this is the only pattern that you can use to get out a like a real value rather than an optional value. Um, so in this case, you have to do a let because this like. JSON squiggly thing will give you an optional string. Um, and then because we're using this guard let, then we're going to be guaranteed that all of those are real objects. And then we can set them on into the real into the real objects for those. Um, so from that point on, anything that has to be a real object I, has one of these kind of if blocks, which is like, so if it gets a start date and it gets an end date, then we set the dates. Otherwise, set them both to be, they, we have to set them both to be nil. Right, because first of all, we can't deal with it, but second of all, uh, they need to be something. Uh, and you have to have both in order to really do anything useful there. Um, other than that, like almost everything else just kind of becomes a like a weird thing. I never found a nice pattern for this kind of like, I want to have something on here, uh, otherwise do this, but then you have to define it uh, uh, every single variable because it's a Swift thing. Um, so you can't just leave it. So you still have to then have this else. So if like there's a way to make this a one-liner, that's like blah, 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 else installation shots, uh, else false, I, I couldn't find it. Um, other than that, pretty simple. Just some like similar code to what we'd write in Eigen. Uh, I initialize the, the variable in the window. It's not a variable, it's a, it's a constant. Oh, it is a variable. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. So you can just like, yeah, let's say it's no. Uh, there we go. Yes, I agree. That would work. Well, no, would it work? Do you have to run like, uh, there's something weird, like you have to do in it somewhere in there to make sure that all, yourself has been created before you create you change the variables that have already been set. Okay. Okay. That's a good call. I can look. Yeah. Cool. Um, that's those. Uh, we got a few like protocol-y yeah, things, yeah, extensions. Yeah. yeah. We've got our own uh, Ausstellungsdauer to date kind of thing. Um, I managed to save a few lines of code on this one for what it's worth when switching it to switch to Swift. Um, uh, yeah, in fact, yeah. In comparison, like by having these functions inside here, I saved a ton of like overhead code because these these little things here are like embedded. Where previously they used to be like long stringy things, and now they're just like get them up for this gate, get the day of this one, get the day of that. Um, yeah, generally that was about it. Uh, no tests. Sorry. And that's about it. The general folder structure of this stuff is that I tried to have these contexts. So like you would go in and you would uh, you'd be like oh so I'm. I'm doing I'm doing something about presenting a show, so anything to do with presenting a show is kept inside here. So like that includes like uh, you know views, that includes actual resources for it, as well as like related view controller cell thingies, like anything that's related to that kind of context. I'm not sure how well that, like this kind of way of organizing can scale, but like for a project at this size and like you know two or three times bigger, like I'm sure this will still be fine. 
No. <laughs> no. I mean, there's bugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's nothing like in the code base that says to me like this has to be. This was like you know like in Eigen there's a hacks file. So far in this there's, there would no, there wouldn't be a hacks file. Yeah, that's why I tried to like try to like make sure that if I get bust. Then suddenly, uh, <laughs> it's not entirely contextless, which now is fine because there's obviously a video of me talking this through. Um, but yeah, no, in general, like there's nothing that just screams this needs a refactor. Because I could still like I still had a day or two after like spare, which is when I built all the pre-caching stuff, and like the pre-caching stuff added to, like a ton of complexity to the app. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, it went from like a really simple app to like a complex app in that transition. And like, oh, there you go. So that was what you, yeah, okay. The thing that I did straight after this was I started look, reading through SD Web Cache's code and started looking through like what is the future of SD Web Cache and like made an issue on that and started thinking about what is Eigen's uh, image caching like solution. And like came up with a rough idea, and then put that on SD Web Images uh, GitHub issues, saying like this is how I think it could be. I could build this, blah blah blah. Um, and then it turned out like there was two pull requests that had enough of a foundation that I could build whatever I wanted on top of that that were just not merged yet. So I just wrote down a note to like build like an RX with extensions so that you get a, uh, an observable. Uh -huh. There's already one. Yeah, doesn't that already exist? Uh, we got something similar in the Oh, right, in the, at, at Rx Swift level. Yeah, cool. exactly. But if we built it on top of SD Web image, then like, you would just, you know. Chuck it in it. Chuck it in if you get like, a new observable or an existing one doesn't already do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that, that is the key, right? There it would be just like straight through. Um, but there's also the fact that you have to. You still want to be closing the networking collections, networking connections at the end of like your view to disappear, but then you might want to bring them like back well, up when you come back in. That's the nice thing about the RX Swift stuff is that you can specify a cancellation block when you no longer need an observable. Uh, yes, and then there need to be a, an easy way to bring back up the ones that currently that did exist, but like there's a pause really. Pause is what I want rather than cancel. Pause. Right. It's like pause while it's not being on that view controller and then come back. It's a child of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. 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 All right. Bye, Internet. All right. Uh, hope this was productive and that in the time that it has become dark, that you have still be able to see me on this video. Because, you know, it's all about me. Uh, <laughs> and. and well, by the time someone else is seeing this, this blog post must already exist. So uh, I hope I wrote a really good blog post and that it was uh, productive and useful. All right, uh, send me some pull requests, internet. Yeah, ciao. And we are.